Confirming that the Badar terrorist campaign was personal and political, not religious, we read, Tabari and Ishak. When the Prophet had finished with his enemy, he gave orders that Abu Jal should be found among the dead. He said, O oh Allah, do not let him escape. The first man who encountered Jal yelled out, and I made him my mark. When he was within my reach, I attacked him and struck him a blow, which severed his foot and half his leg. By Allah, when it flew off, I could only compare it to a date stone which flies out of a crusher when it is struck. Then Jal's son hit me on the shoulder and cut off my arm. It dangled at my side from a piece of skin. The fighting prevented me from reaching him after that. I fought the whole day, dragging my arm behind me. When it began to hurt me, I put my foot on it and stood until I pulled it off. Consider the indoctrination and the motivation required to inspire such devotion, and contemplate how the same prophet and doctrine arouse the same hateful passions today, passions capable of toppling economies and nations. Then Mu'adith passed by Abu Jal, who was now crippled and lying helplessly. He hit him until he could no longer move, leaving Jal gasping for his last breath. But then Mu'adich was killed. Abdallah bin Masud passed by Jal right when the messenger ordered us to search for him among the corpses. The prophet said, If you cannot identify him, look for the mark of a wound on his knee, for I jostle against him when we were boys. I pushed him so that he fell and scratched one of his knees. Translated, I may be a cowardly, slithering snake of a man now, but I wasn't always a weasel. Ishak Abdallah bin Musad said, I found Abu Jal in the throes of death. I put my foot on his neck because he had grabbed me once at Mecca and had hurt me. Then I said, Has Allah disgraced you and put you to shame, O enemy of Allah? In what way has he disgraced me, he said? Am I anything more important than a man whom you have killed? Tell me, to whom is the victory? I said, To Allah and his messenger. Bukhari Abu Jal said, You should not be proud that you have killed me. It was the Muslims who had disgraced themselves. A few hundred militants had gone out to rob some merchants, yet God and Prophet declared a glorious victory. Even the pagan Abu Jal knew that it was a meaningless skirmish, an embarrassment for everyone. Ishak and Tubari I cut off Abu Jal's head and brought it to the messenger. I said, O oh, Allah's prophet, this is the head of the enemy of Allah. Muhammad said, Is this so by Allah, than whom there is no other deity? This used to be the messenger of Allah's oath. The vengeful Muhammad was no more articulate than the inspired one. I said, Yes, then I threw down his head before the prophet's feet. He said, Praise be to Allah. Bukhari O oh, Muslims, take not my enemies as friends, offering them kindness when they reject Allah, the Prophet's messenger, and his Quran. Whoever does that, then indeed he has gone far astray. You have come out to fight in my cause, seeking my acceptance, so do not be friendly with them even in secret. This was the source of Quran 60, verse 1. It's hard to imagine men writing this down as if they were religious. Ishak Ukasha fought until he broke his sword. He came to the apostle, who gave him a wooden cudgel, telling him to fight with that. He brandished it, and it became a brilliant weapon. Allah gave him victory while he wielded it. He took that weapon with him to every raid he fought with Allah's apostle until he was killed in the rebellion. Which is also known as the War of Compulsion. These were his dying words. What do you think about when you kill people? Are these not men just because they are not Muslims? Sobering, isn't it? According to Ibn Ishaq, Muhammad's quota on paradise was proclaimed at Badar. Ishaq, when Allah's apostle said, Seventy thousand of my followers shall enter paradise like the full moon, Ukasha asked if he could be one of them. Then a lesser Ansari asked to be included, 
But the prophet replied, Ukasha beat you to it, and my prayer is now cold. At this point in his mission, Muhammad's vision was no greater than the conquest of Mecca and Central Arabia. Inciting 70,000 fools to die for what he coveted seemed sufficient at the time. Little did he know that his scam would live on, infecting billions and sending millions to their death. Second, the, like a full moon, was an acknowledgment of Allah's lunar genealogy. Third, to earn Allah's paradise, one has to be a big-time murderer. And fourth, imagine risking your soul on a man who said, My prayer is cold. Both Prophet and God loved it when men sacrificed their lives for them. Bukhari When we wrote the Holy Quran, I missed one of the verses I used to hear Allah's apostle reciting. Then we searched and found it. The verse was, Among the believers are men who have been true to their covenant with Allah. Of them, some have fulfilled their obligations to Allah, that is, they have been killed in Allah's cause, and some of them are still waiting to be killed. This became Surah 33.23. So we wrote this in its place in the Quran. According to the Quran, all good Muslims fall into one of two categories those who have died killing infidels, and those who will die killing infidels.